Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to compare journal and SMTP archiving. My name is Phil Walters and I'm a consultant working for a company called Adeptech. So SMTP archiving was introduced in EV1101 and what we're going to look at in this video is a comparison between exchange journaling versus SMTP journaling. So on the left hand side we've got the traditional exchange journaling architecture where we have mailbox servers which will then journal to a number of journal mailbox servers and then we have one or more enterprise vault servers which will connect to those journal mailbox servers and archive the items out of the journal mailboxes. On the right hand side we have SMTP archiving or SMTP journaling in this case, our mailbox servers and exchange can journal directly to Enterprise Vault, which means that we don't need to have the intermediary journal mailbox servers. So let's compare exchange journaling against SMTP journaling in more detail. First of all, single instance storage. Both exchange journal archiving and SMTP journal archiving both support single instance storage. Support for cloud-based messaging systems such as Office 365. The traditional Exchange Journal Archiving can't support this. Whereas one of the big benefits of SMTP Journal Archiving is that it can archive from systems like Office 365. One of the issues with Exchange Journal Archiving is that you get this thing called fan out. Where you get duplicate emails because emails are being sent from multiple mailbox servers. Because the architecture of SMTP journal archiving, we can eliminate fan out without any requirement for a third party product. Classification is available for exchange journal archiving using data classification services and a custom filter. For SMTP journal archiving, it is available in Enterprise Vault 12. For exchange journal archiving, you can only archive to a journal archive. But for SMTP journal archiving, you have great flexibility you can, and you can archive to any archive type. The index footprint for exchange journal archiving is about 12% of the size of the original data. Whereas because SMTP journal archiving uses EML files instead of MAPI, the index footprint is only about 9% of the original data size. Selective journal archiving is available via a custom filter for exchange journal archiving and is built into SMTP journal archiving. Finally, both exchange journal archiving and SMTP journal archiving support compliance accelerator, discovery accelerator and the EDP platform. So let's look at some design considerations for SMTP archiving. Any design for SMTP archiving requires high availability because without it, if the EV server fails, then we're going to get build up in exchange queues. We'll look at this in more detail in subsequent slides. The holding folder which stores the EML files before they're archived by the SMTP archiving task, should be fast storage with uh, suitable capacity. You reckon that it should have um, capacity for about five days worth of emails. Detailed sizing for the whole architecture should be done using the Enterprise Vault Performance Guide, which has a lot of details about ingest rates and so on. SMTP archiving is, is suitable for most distributed networks because the architecture doesn't actually require to connect via MAPI. So we're now going to look at how to create a high availability solution. So if we have a single Enterprise Vault server, if the EV server fails, emails are going to queue at the Exchange Mailbox servers. This is going to cause back pressure and slow down performance. So we need to consider having a high availability environment where we have multiple Enterprise Vault servers for load balancing and redundancy. This is supported in Enterprise Vault 1101 
cumulative hotfix 2 and above. So what are the options for a load balance connection? Well, the simple option is to use an SMTP connector with multiple smart hosts. You can also use multiple MX records to deliver the email to the multiple EV servers. A more sophisticated solution is to use a hardware load balancer. The great thing about a hardware load balancer is that it can get health reports from each of the EV servers and balance the load accordingly. But obviously there's extra cost. One of the key features that enables this to work is something called address rewriting, which came in an Enterprise Vault 1101 Cumulative Hotfix 2. What this enables you to do is to do all your journaling to a single journal address. So in this example, we're going to set up journaling to evjournal at smtp.local. But in order to get those emails to go to multiple enterprise vault servers, yes, we've got an SMTP send connector and we've got both EV server one and EV server two in that send connector. So 50% of the emails are going to go to each of the servers. But how can we get the enterprise vault server to accept those emails? Well, we configure address rewriting. So on EV server one, we get it to rewrite the address evjournal smtp.local to evsmtp1 at smtp.local. That particular address is a target address to be archived in the evsmtp1 archive. The same on EV Server 2, so we're address rewriting to evsmtp2 at smtp.local and the emails are placed in evsmtp2 archive. So in this way, we can load balance over the two EV servers. And if one EV server goes down, all the emails are going to go to the other server. What I recommend now is you check out the video Journal or SMTP Archiving Part 2, which includes a demonstration video of how to configure address rewriting.